Hello everybody! Welcome on in to my sweet home this afternoon. I apologize for being a few minutes behind. <laughs> Ooh, it's been a crazy day trying to find all my tools and getting things ready. When you're learning something new, you always never know what to expect. Hey, Miss Lisa, how are you? Thank you for hopping on. You're my first, uh, first watcher. I'm going to adjust my camera. I apologize. Usually like to have that ready, but I don't want you all crooked today. How are you? Hello, Miss Betty. Thank you for watching today. I hope you all are excited. I have something so fun to show you today. Um, it's all about gourds. All about gourds. If you've ever wanted to kind of uh, dip your toes in, in what, you know, gourd art and gourd painting. This will be perfect uh, today for you. It's sort of like a little 101 maybe, only I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm only going to be sharing the information that I have learned while I've been doing a little bit of research over the last couple of weeks. I have been, hello Miss Francis, how are you? And Betty and Angie, hello. Brenda and Lori, thank you all so much for watching this afternoon. I, I really do think you're going to enjoy this. Um, and if you're new here to My Sweet Home, thank you, Vicki, you're a new follower. I was just getting ready to say, if you're new to My Sweet Home, let me introduce myself. My name's Tracy Campbell here at My Sweet Home Living. You can search Facebook by My Sweet Home Living. And then a lot of times you can also find me over in the Craft Around the Clock group um, where we have live crafting uh, programming, scheduling Monday through Friday, and then occasionally on weekends as well. Um, I'm the admin and creator over there in that group, so many of you may know me from there. So anyway, welcome on into my page at my sweet home today. Uh, we are going to be doing something so fun. I have started a new primitive fall decorating series. Uh, last week, let me show you what we made. I don't know if you can see. Oh, we made this little cutting board pumpkin, little jack-o'-lantern last week, and it was so much fun. Uh, this week, we're getting into gourds. And um, I think you're really going to love this. Listen, I do not grow gourds, but I, I was able to find some on Marketplace. Marketplace is such a great resource, a great tool to find things that you never dreamed you'd find, right? <laughs> Hello, Marianne. You love gourds. Well, you may be an expert on this, so you chime in anytime today if I need a little bit of advice. <laughs> um, you will give me some tips and tricks if you have some on gourds, because like I said, I am a newbie at this. All I know is that uh, it's something I've been wanting to learn and you know when you want to learn something you just got to dig in and sometimes just get your hands dirty and figure it out right um, so thank you thank you hello Miss Sonia I'm ready to see what you're going to create with this gourd okay well it's gonna be kind of like a multi-step process and I'm gonna kind of show you what I have learned and kind of what mistakes and what tips and what tricks I've been reading about. So let's start with just gourd painting in general. I mean, when you search Pinterest for gourd painting or gourd art, there are tons of things that pop up. And uh, Cindy says, oh my gourd. <laughs> um, so fun to grow gourds. I, that's so interesting. I've thought about it, but the drying process seems a little intimidating. Maybe not so much intimidating, but you have to have lots of room in the right kind of air quality environment and things for them to dry properly. And I probably don't have the space and the air quality around here to do it properly. So that's why I turned to Marketplace. I found um, four gourds. Where is this one? I found four gourds on Marketplace and I, they were $10 for the, four, for the four of them. And so I thought, well, this would be great for me to just kind of try it out, right? So I, this is one of them. This is the one that we're going to work on today as well. Um, but this one is another shape that I'm dying to try something really cool with this. I may do this on a live. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I may kind of take you all along with an experiment on this one. This one is a thinner shell, and although I'm not real familiar with it, I'm just afraid that it would crack, and so I didn't want to get everybody's hopes up today and then turn the project into a great big flop. <laughs> that would be horrible. So we're going with something a little bit safer, and we're going with these small ones. I do not know the technical names, the scientific names of each of these gourds. All I know is that I love the shapes. They were for ten dollars at my Facebook marketplace and I thought this is a good place to start experimenting <laughs> so hopefully I inspire you a little bit today this one's gonna be a project for another day but I, I love the shape of this one it's gonna be a great project uh, that one's gonna be more for Halloween 
Um, and actually the one that we're doing today, we're gonna be doing it for uh, Halloween as well. Or it can be for fall. You'll see how you can make it work for either way. Um, so gourd art dates all the way back to like one of the most primitive forms of art all the way back to the days of cave paintings. Can you all believe that? And so even today, there are ancient artifacts that are still continuing to be discovered that include different forms of art uh, for, from gourds. So they originated uh, uh, back in the day from uh, around Africa and Egypt. And so it was basically, um, even some of the information that I was reading about was even talked about how you know, the women in these different various countries used um, gourd art sort of as their like, um, I don't want to say like their status symbol, but if you were really good at gourd art, like you were like the stuff <laughs> in your country, in your village or in your, you know, in your native area. Um, and so it's still, you know, and it's continued all the way up through to today. And it's becoming even more popular now than it has been in recent years because people are just discovering how fun it is, how um, you know how simple you can make it, or how elaborate. And it's just an amazing form of art. Now, gourds come from a family of you know I'm sure you're familiar. They come from a family of like pumpkins, different squash, uh, different types of cucumbers. But actually, the gourds are the only one in this family of, of um, I don't know if you want to call them vegetables. I don't know the scientific name for them. It's some a big long word that I would just majorly butcher up even if I tried. But they come from a family of produce that in the, in the uh, gourds are the only one in this specific family that actually dry with a hard, almost wood-like shell. Okay, so I think that's pretty neat in itself. So they're so unique and so versatile. Um, ah, thank you, Miss Lisa. I'm telling you, I've been digging for a while and there's still so much to know. And like I said, I'm not even gonna touch the tip of the iceberg with it today, but I kind of know what, it, what I wanted to have in, in my mind as far as a project goes. And um, so you all will see how it turns out. If it turns out to be a flop, oh well. <laughs> we've tried and we'll learn we'll look, keep learning and try it again because I have four of these okay now I've already kind of started on one because I'm going to kind of have to speed up the process for you all um today but um I did forget my paper towels hey Gracie if you're listening I need the roll of paper towels please darling <laughs> I told her I knew there would be something that I would forget there's lots of different little uh, things going on today that I'm not used to having on hand. So I have a little box of tools here. And so let me show you what um, I have been looking for on how to color these um, gourds. There are different ways you can do it. You can paint them. You can um, stain them. There's different kinds of stains. There's acrylic paints. There's acrylic dyes. There uh, are... Um, alcohol dyes there are leather dyes there's actually something just called gourd art paint there's tons of things really there's basically no way to do it they just each give you a slightly different effect hey miss laura and tina and kathy how are you all thank you all so much for joining in this afternoon so uh, hopefully you learned a little bit today um if just to kind of wet your fancy about this because I just think it's so interesting and hopefully I give you a little bit of inspiration to try this on your own as well. So as I was doing my research, I picked out two different types of dyes because I want to keep the integrity to see all of the markings, all of the characteristics on these gourds I love, okay? And really, I love it in its natural form, you know, but gourds come in all different colors, obviously. So not all gourds are gonna be the same. But I wanted something a little bit of a deeper orange, almost like a burnt orange. And so I knew that I was going to try a different type of dye. So I went with two different types of dye. And on the project that I was working on earlier, I actually combined the two. So this is something that I bought off of uh, Amazon, okay? I have tons of links for some of the products that I'm going to be showing you and telling you about today. If you are interested and want to know more about these, there are so many links. I just could not type them and copy them all in the video description before we started today, but I would be happy to share that with you. And in fact, probably when I post a finished photo later on my page, I'll be sure to make sure that, um, be sure to make sure, <laughs> I'm repeating myself, 
I will try to make sure that I post the links in there for you all if you would like to know more about these products. So this is just a leather die. Here's the brand, all right? This leather die, that's the back of it, sorry. This leather die, I'll let you take a screenshot if you want to. This leather die is from Amazon. I'm sure you can buy it at other websites, but it comes fairly quickly. It is a, just a leather die, it comes in tons of different colors. So if you're gonna make like a non-traditional type of gourd art, you can really fancy this up with tons of different colors of dye. I just went with a basic orange in this one. And then this um, particular um, dye, let's see, this says it's acid free. This is just called Gourd Master Ink Dye. Now Gourd Master is a brand. It's from Wellborn Gourds. If you look Wellborn, let me see where I can focus that. Gordmaster, and it's in the color chestnut. They have tons of different shades. Uh, you can also use different types of stains. I'm sure the Valspar stains will probably work just the same way. Now these are pretty, I mean, they do have a slight odor, but they are not very strong at all. They are very quick drying. You do not have to go back over and, you know, buff them or polish them or anything like that. It dries, soaks into the gourd, and you're done. So what I have done to this morning, I uh, kind of experimented with one. I did sort of like a color combo. Now, these gourds were pretty much in the same color family in the very beginning. So do you see the difference? So this one is dyed <laughs> with a combination of different things. And I'll show you how it worked really well. And then this one is just in its natural form. Now, what I'd like to do, let me grab my gloves. You will definitely need gloves, especially if you're using dye. Hey, Miss Terry, I know Miss Pat. Thank you so much for watching this afternoon. Um, if you think you know of anybody that's interested in anything related to gourds <laughs> or primitive decorating, invite them on over today because I think, I think they're going to love it. They're going to love it, and especially if they love primitive style decorating, which a lot of people who like gourd type decorating probably likes primitive style too. Um, so what I started with, usually either a wet paper towel, you can use a baby wipe, which is, I have tons of little baby wipes over here on the side, and that's what I'm going to start with. And um, I, you know, I started with the lighter, well, actually I started with this orange first. Hey, Gracie, can you bring me the paper towels, please? What I started with was the orange uh, leather dye, and then I went over it with a top coat of the chestnut. So this, this gourd is a little more red than what I'd hoped for it to be. Thank you, sweet pea. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do this time around, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a slightly different technique and show you what I did um, with the other one too. So what I'm doing is taking a, a wet wipe and I'm just going over this gourd and so that it gets equal amount of moisture applied to the shell. And what this will help do now, it won't totally, um, totally make it absorb evenly, but it will help is if you give this an even coat of moisture before you apply your stain. It will, it will help your stain absorb a little bit more equally across, across the shell of this gourd. You know, because these gourds, they're dry, you know, and there are drier areas than others. And so um, I just kind of like to go over it. Also, it helps to remove any type of dust and dirt that may be already on here. And so just give it a quick wipe. Mine's not too dirty. Just a little dusty, but not bad. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, uh, let's see, my paper towels. You could use little cotton um those little cotton circle pads, you could use those. Those are great for this type of project. Um, I would just advise to not use something that soaks up a great amount of your dye because you're gonna have a lot of it wasted, obviously. So if you use paper towels, just keep it to like a half sheet of a paper towel so that you, um, you know, you're conserving a little bit more of your dye than if you uh, use a cotton. Um, Pauline, what is it made of? I'm not sure which one. Uh, Melanie, I grabbed the gourds off Marketplace, off my Marketplace, search Marketplace. A lot of farm markets, farm stands, um, they have these that you can buy. Um, I bought four of them for $10.
this lady had bought them a, a while back and she was getting ready to move. She never had a chance to use them. And um, so she was selling them. I was like, okay, this is a great time for me to just experiment. <laughs> so here we go. What I like to do is to start at the bottom. I've just put a little bit of my orange dye on my paper towel. I like to start at the bottom. That's kind of like my testing zone because it's not gonna be seen, right? So I like to start on the bottom first. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna rub it in a circular motion. Okay, so do you see this orange? It doesn't change it a whole lot. It gives me a little bit brighter of a color, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna work my way up. If I see that it looks okay um, on the bottom, then I'm gonna kinda work my way up in just a circular motion, okay? Hey, Miss Sheila, how are you, sweet lady? All right, so I'm just gonna keep going, and then as you start to see it fading, you'll probably know when you need to add a little bit more dye to your paper towel. Okay, so I'm just gonna add more to it. Definitely make sure that you have a work surface that you don't mind to get dye on. If you are working at this inside your home, definitely make sure you put some form of um, cover down on your work surface because this dye will stain. All right. Now you can see this part right here of my, whoop, I'm backwards. This part of my gourd is soaking up a lot more of the color, but it was already naturally um, darker in that area to begin with. So, and obviously the more dye that you put on, the more intense your color will be, okay? Now, I'm going for a more primitive look, so I do kind of want mine a little more rustic. I'm not so sure that I ordered, you know, the right color. I, I only went with two colors. You know, I didn't want to go overboard at first. I kind of wanted to see what I was getting my hands on color-wise before I went and ordered a bunch of colors because some of these dyes can be expensive depending on where you order them from. Um, but I didn't want to order a whole lot until I knew for sure what I was going with. So this is super bright, but we will tone it down. And as it dries, it does darken as well. Okay, now this is just one coat of the orange of um, this brand of leather dye, okay, off of Amazon. And I'm just going over it a couple of times, make sure I don't have any streaks or empty spots. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry for a minute, but I do know that I see a little bit of lightness right there so I'm going to kind of go over that just a little more see if I can't even that up a little bit now you're not going to get the finish completely even because it has natural you know coloring patterns to it anyway and that's what makes them so beautiful you know it's just like there's no two humans alike unless of course you're identical twins but even then you're still not exactly alike but there's no two gourds that are exactly alike there's no two snowflakes that are exactly alike you get what I'm saying so they're all so unique and beautiful in their own way and you kind of want to, that to show something so cool about using things in their natural form and we're just enhancing that natural beauty on these gourds all right so I've just given it a coating all right it is showing a lot brighter on my camera than it actually is in real life it's definitely brighter in, on camera than it is on my end of things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the top back on this dye, okay? Give you one more look at what this is, orange leather dye, there's the brand, this was on Amazon, okay? If you're interested. Now, since this is a little brighter than what I want it to be, all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kinda go over it with a baby wipe and just sort of off, you know, rub off some of the excess. See that? So we're still gonna have that color. Under See, even when we wet it, it darkens the color there. Um, and when we're all finished, we're gonna give this a nice uh, protectant coating that will really make it have that, not super glossy, but a nice shine to help preserve and protect the finish. And these dyes, they, they dry super quick, okay? They dry super quick. Hey, this is Vicki. Ah, are we back? Okay. <laughs> it just totally my screen blanked out. So I wanna make sure that you all can still see me. Um, I, 
Sherry says, I have a big bag, oh, a bag full of small gourds in my garage. Very interested in this project. Good. Hey, Miss Jennifer, how are you? Hello, Miss Janet. Melanie, I was freezing for a second, but I think we're back on. You all let me know um, if we're good here. All right. So I've wet that down, just kind of grabbed some of the extra off. Let me rotate it around so you can kind of see the color variation that we're getting. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so now what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to go with this chestnut color. Woohoo, this way. This is the dye that is, um, it's called Gourd Master Ink Dyes. This is ordered off of a website called Wellborn Gourds. And I used a paper towel with this dye this morning and it, it went on pretty intense. So what I think I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use a wet wipe to apply this. Hey, Miss Brenda, how are you? I'm glad you're loving it. I'm glad you're loving it. Hello, Miss Chasseter, how are you? So I'm just taking a baby wipe. I'm just placing a few drops on this and we're gonna see what we get. Always test it on the bottom first, right? <laughs> Always test it on the bottom. Give it a second and we'll see what it does. It gives it a little bit deeper of an orange, I believe. All right, so now we're just gonna work our way up the round part of this. Hey, Miss Betty, love the color. You went, oh, I, I know, I kind of froze for a minute. Good, I'm glad we're back in, up and going. I hope we didn't miss too much. Sorry about that. You never know, I think things are being a little glitchy on, on things um, across Facebook wide. Um, seems like this week that we've experienced a few little glitches, but hopefully you're seeing me now. Hi, Elizabeth from Alabama. Well, welcome on in. Listen, you all tell me where you're watching from. I love seeing where you all are from. I also love knowing if you are new around here. Love to know that as well. Because I love welcoming in new friends to my sweet home. Thank you, Miss Melanie. All right, so this is deepening up this color. Do you see how it just darkened it a little bit? And I'll show you in a minute what it's gonna dry to look like. It may not be exactly the same since we're using a baby wipe on this one. And I'm basically wetting it as I'm applying the stain. So I'm not sure how much of this is wetness or how much of this is actually from the stain itself. So we're gonna apply a little bit more of this chestnut and see what it gets us. And once you kind of experiment with your color combinations, you'll get more of, a, more of an idea of what colors what shades work well, and you can of course apply this in multiple layers as well, okay? Now we've taken something that was beautiful to start with, only now we're just highlighting it and accenting it. It really is bothering me though that it's appearing so orange on your screen. Um, in, my, in, my, in my eyes, <laughs> it's looking like burnt orange. It's looking a real rusty orange, and that's what I'm wanting. I think the lights are just making it um, a little more intense than what it is in real life. So, we are gonna let this dry for a little bit, okay? And then, um, I'm gonna kinda show you what we're gonna do next with this other gourd. Now, let me show you, well, let me take this off. I'm getting confused, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> hey, Louise, new from, uh, from Iowa, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so you see this one. This looks like a little bit more of a rusty orange on screen, and this is the color that I was going with. I love the color that it is on screen, but now in real life, this one's too dark for me. <laughs> so it, it just depends, you know. This is, I do love the color that it looks like on screen, but in real life, it's a little dark. I think it still may continue to dry a little bit. I don't know. Like I said, this is the first time I've done this, so this is a total new experience. So you can see the difference there, okay? Um, basically applied the same two colors to these. This one, oh, this one is dry. This one is not. We've just applied the dye, okay? Thank you, Miss Brenda. Okay, so I'm trying to think, what should I show you next with this? Um, so what I have taken, let me set this one off to dry. What I have done over the course of my research here <laughs> in the last couple of weeks, let me put the top on my dye. Don't want to spill that for sure. I have been researching the best way to like cut uh, cut gourds, trim gourds, um, basically cut them into different shapes. Now, a lot of people take the tops off of these gourds and make them into beautiful bowls. 
Um, you can weave um, sort of different things around the top edges. You can make different designs. You can wood burn in them, uh, wood burn different colors. Thank you, Miss Janet. How are you? Thank you, Miss Betty. Um, and so there's tons of different things you can do this. All I wanted to create was a primitive little jack-o'-lantern gourd with some little lights in it. And so that was my goal with this first one. I wanted to keep it simple <laughs> on the first one. Now, the next one I'm going to get a little more challenging. I'm going to challenge myself a little bit more with the next one. Uh, so thank you, Miss Sonia. So with this one, um, what I have done... I have been looking at the best type of tools to use to trim these gourds with. And it's something that kind of wanted to, you know, I wanted to get something that I can use just for, you know, for more than one project. Something that can be used for multiple things, right? So I have been looking and I bought this particular saw on Amazon. It is a, the brand is Proxon, P-R-O-X-X-O-N. And it's a super jigsaw. It's just a little tiny hand uh, jigsaw. Let me show you. This is what it looks like. Don't be intimidated by it. <laughs> it is small. And if you get one of these and you need help figuring out how to work it, you message me. <laughs> because I was in the boat uh, several hours ago. I was like, ah, I may have to cancel or postpone my live today because I can't figure this out. <laughs> but we got it together. Got it together. Um, you do have, when you get this one, um, I don't know if you can see on this picture, it comes with, Whoop, whoop, this way it comes with this little thing on the bottom this is called a foot okay and this is a large foot that comes on this now in order to trim your gourds you need something a little bit smaller so that you can make uh, shorter tighter little curves and cuts and things and so on the same website the Wellborn gourds where I ordered this gourd master ink they have a uh, some really cool tools and gadgets that you can buy that are made specifically for gourd art and trimming and cutting gourds. So I had to order something called a special little gourd foot. <laughs> See how much narrower this little piece is? This is a foot. It's just an attachment. You can change it out. So I took off the foot attachment that came with this little saw and purchased this one separately, attached it, and then uh, make sure you want to have a good little uh, saw blade. I ordered some little saw blades. I think the ones that come with this will work okay. Um, I did order some special little saw blades from Wellburn Gourds as well. Um, but I think you would be okay without ordering the special blades. But you do need this foot and you do need this little uh, super saw. Now, there are tons of people that I have read online that use um, oh, a Dremel tool. A Dremel tool. So if you have something like that, that would work as well, too, you know, just as well too. Uh, and so I just went with this because I'm kind of I got some other little projects at my sleeve that I'm wanting to use this on. So I thought I'm just going to get that, and this will be the first time, the first project that we're going to break it in. Okay. So <clears throat> what I did is I took a sharpie. Actually, first I took a pencil, and I what I did is I held this up where the light was shining on this. I set it flat on my surface. And I kind of just freehanded my little jack-o'-lantern face pattern that I liked. Now, did I freehand it completely out of my imagination? No. <laughs> I looked online for some little cute little jack-o'-lantern face designs that I really thought were cute. Simple, simple, simple is the key here, especially the first time around. Go with something simple. Now, you can, um, what I would really encourage you to do, although I didn't, we didn't have a chance to get any, you know that press and stick, um, Oh, goodness, like, um, I've completely gone brain. Press and seal, like the, the wrap that you can wrap, you know, bowls and, and foods and preserved foods, put them in your fridge, right? Press and seal. I really wanted to get some of that and stick it on to my gourd. Like, take that and draw my pattern on it and then stick it onto my gourd. And then take my little saw and, you know, cut out my little design, right? I didn't have any press and seal. <laughs> So I freehanded it with my pencil, and then I went back with a Sharpie. I'm just going to go ahead and get my Sharpie out because we're going to need that in a minute anyway. I did get my Sharpie, and then I went back over my pencil marks when I got it the way I want it. Um, went back over it with a Sharpie as my guide for my saw. Now, when you use this little saw, of course, you definitely want to make sure that you follow all the safety you know, precautions and things like that that are in the user uh, guide. Definitely want to make sure you use eye protectors, um, you know, safety glasses, glasses, whatever. 
And there are some, you know, very important tools and tricks, tips, whatever you want to call them, that is important that you do know when you're using something like this. So what I did, um, you would take like a little utility knife, and I do not have it with me. I do have a little kitchen knife. <laughs> now, it depends on the thickness of your shell. This one is pretty thick, um, but a little kitchen knife will work fine. So on your lines, okay, when you've drawn out your little jack-o'-lantern face, on your lines, what you need to do on each shape, on the eye, on this eye, on the nose, and then on the mouth, you need to make a little starting cut with your kitchen knife. So you just take this in and you wiggle it down all the way through the shell and get a, a good starting point. What that does is it allows you <clears throat> To stick your jigsaw blade down in there then you can turn it on but you have to have this this whole blade pushed all the way down into the shell of your gourd so if I were to do that I would take my shell or my uh, blade and it has to go all the way down in that starting hole and then you can turn it on and start slowly cutting your design okay very important that your shell of your gourd has to be all the way up to the foot. If you don't, if you just stick this, sorry, my nose is tickling. <laughs> if you don't, what will happen is that you run the risk of breaking your blade. You don't want that to happen. Um, <clears throat> and so really what you do is you just let this guide itself. And so when you turn this on, and I'm just going to show you, I went ahead and made my little um, design on my jack-o'-lantern earlier today. So let me know what you think. My eyes are a little wonky, just a little bit wonky. This one is a little bit taller than this one, um, but I like the shape. I went with something really small, or really simple is what I should say. So um, just as an experiment with the first time around, okay? So I took my jigsaw and what you stick it in, let it kind of guide, you know, you guide it, but don't push it. And it will cut the design out really nicely for you. Um, and then you can go back and kind of clean in the edges. Now you can see how thick the wall of my gourd is on this one is really thick, but it's not super hard. It is squishy. Like I could push my finger on this back inside part of this gourd and I could, I could smush it. Okay. So, um, Charlene, sure you, you've painted gourds before, but never carved them. Well, good, good, good. It's, that's so cool. I'm not, um, I don't know. I mean, I probably could paint on them, but I'm just impatient. <laughs> I wanted to, and I've, I kind of had this idea in my mind anyway for a while. But um, what you want to do is you want to definitely make sure that you get these shapes cut out. And it's best to do short uh, little cuts. You, you, if you turn your saw, at, you know, your blade, make sure to make short, um, slow movements to make the turns and you should be okay. But this is specially designed for cutting gourds, okay, with these little short intricate cuts. And so you can see my little Sharpie marks. I still see a few of my Sharpie marks and I'm gonna have to go back in and trim that up just a little bit. But um, on one side of my mouth, I made my cut. Let's see, which side was it? I went a little bit beyond my marking and you can see a little bit of my Sharpie there, but I'll go back and trim that up. So I just made a little curve and it kind of makes it look like it's part of his smile. And I'm gonna cut it a little bit more so that I make sure that the light shines through that little tr uh, little trim mark. But I think that's just a cute little smile mark. And so I went ahead and intentionally did it on the other side of his mouth as well. I painted them into cowboy scenes. Oh, how cute, Char. I would love to see a picture of those if you had one. That would be so pretty, I bet. So once you get this, you know, your, your pieces cut out, of course, then you have to clean out the insides. And there's several ways you can do that. Of course, you can cut a hole in the back or you can trim a hole in the bottom. That would probably be more ideal. But what I decided to do is I thought, okay, I'm just gonna cut this first and see what how bad the inside looks. I've never done this before. And I'm sure there's different kinds of gourds that are different, you know, that have different sort of insides <laughs> that, and, that are left and so you know everything in the inside of course is dry but it's just like cleaning out a pumpkin only this is much less messier than a pumpkin and there are special tools that uh, depending on what type of gourd you have sometimes it's necessary to have special tools to clean the inside and let me show you i did purchase something because i didn't know if i was going to need it but it's sort of like a um big sanding tool let me pick what time it is okay it uh, looks like I have about 20 minutes. I want to make sure that I'm off by 4 o'clock because we have a next a new presenter in Craft on the Clock at 4 o'clock. So I want to make sure that I'm off of the off of here by them. 
but this is basically a big ball of stone little pieces of stone. think of this as like a instead of a sanding block this is a sanding ball <laughs> and what you do is you connect this into a you know a drill you could basically attach this to a drill I meant to bring my drill in and forgot to bring it and then what you do is you take this up inside your gourd and you use it inside your gourd to basically sand and smooth the insides of your gourd okay so basically it's a cleaning tool now I haven't done this yet because I wanted to see what it would look like. So I got all my pieces cut out and I thought, okay, well, there is a bunch of stuff in there. <laughs> but I thought, I'm just going to see what I can do with a good old kitchen tool. You know what this is, right? <laughs> I wouldn't spend it. You might just get the Dollar Tree for a dollar versus something like this that's going to cost you quite a bit more. Um, but depending on how serious or how, what type of gourd you're using. So I just pulled, I shook out everything first off that was loose, right? And then I went and took this wood spoon and I went in and I just scraped, rubbed and scraped until, and I could still can do some more. But really, I'm okay with the way it looks in here already. And I could go in here and smooth this down later, I'm not sure. But if I do, I will cut a circle, a small circle, just big enough to where this can fit through and I can, you know, manipulate this inside and get, um, you know, the rest of this smooth and cleaned out. But I think I'm okay with the way it is right now. Uh, so we're just going to go with that. Now, the next idea that I was going to use, sometimes I have seen people that they actually spray paint the insides of these black. Um, I don't know if I want to do that yet or not. I'm still kind of undecided. So all I did with this is I just cut out the in, you know, my shape. I've gone back in and trimmed around the edges because this, this wall was really thick. Uh, should you wear a mask when cleaning out gourds? Oh, absolutely, Pam. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, definitely on being in an, out, an outdoor space as well. Um, because some gourds can have mold and mildew on, on them. And you definitely, I, before you even start, I, I bought these already pre-cleaned. And so there are different cleaning methods you would would uh, go through to get these clean before you even start in the process that we've started today. But yes. Um, hi, Miss Yvonne. How are you? So we're going to dress this up. And first, actually, before I do that, since I've already got my stain on it, my stain is dry. I'm pretty well, I'm, I'm going to be fine with the color of the way this is. I'm going to leave it as is. If I had a nice, um, um, I don't want to say super glossy, but it's just maybe like a semi-gloss uh, spray uh, clear sealant, that's what I would use. But however, the only kind of sealant that I have is a semi, or no, it's matte. I'm sorry, it's matte. And I definitely want to make sure that I have a little bit of sheen on this because I think it brings out the colors. And so I'm going to be using um, gloss Mod Podge. <laughs> and we're just going to put a light uh, coating over this. Nothing super thick, just enough to just kind of give it a little bit of a sheen. And this won't be overly glossy. It, it says it's gloss, but it's not super high gloss by any stretch. It's just going to give it a little bit of sheen. And I think what it's going to do is it's really going to make these little um, characteristics of the gourd shell really just show up. And I can already tell that it's already helped deepening the color. I'm just going to pour this Mod Podge on my brush because it is pulling up a little bit of that stain off of the shell. And so I don't want to stick that back in my Mod Podge bottle. But... um. It's just going to give it a little clear coat protectant and that way it'll protect it from stains as well depending on where you display this um, so we're just going to give this a real quick brush on and then I think we'll hit it with the blow dryer maybe we'll see we'll see how quick it dries of course you all know if you're familiar with Mod Podge it does dry clear although it looks a little silly right at this moment I'm going to go ahead and give it a little coat on my stem I love gourds that have stems. I know if you all are like me, when you pick out pumpkins in the fall, I always love to pick out the pumpkins who have like the really cool stems <laughs> still attached. I think that's so neat. It might be sound silly. I love little pumpkins with the cute little curly stems. Okay. So I'm going to go around the bottom. Woohoo! Dripping Mod Podge everywhere. <laughs> I'm not going to do this on the bottom right now 
just for time's sake, I'll let this part dry and then I'll go back later and put it on the bottom, okay? Hey, Miss Becky and Betty and Nancy. How are you ladies? Hello, Miss Susan. Let me get a little bit more on here. I think we're about done with this step but it is already deepening. Can you see under that Mod Podge up here at the top, it's already deepening the color. I'm really interested to see how this dries, what it's gonna look like in its finished state. It'll be very interesting. Okay. I'm just spreading out some of this extra and then we will hit it with the blow dryer for a few minutes. Let's see if that doesn't speed things up for us. Just gonna go around now. I'm still undecided what I'm gonna do with the coloring um, of this shell. I'm not sure if I like this white um, showing or not, like the wall of the gourd. I'm not sure if I like that yet or not. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there yet. Okay. Spread this out so it will dry a little faster. Okay. If you all have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to, um, may not be able to get a, 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 an answer for you right away because like I said, this is my first time around at this, but I do want to share the experience with you and uh, give you a little bit of the knowledge that I've learned while I've been doing some, some digging and reading up on this. Okay, put the top on this Mod Podge. Let's hit it with, I normally do not like to use the blow dryer on my lives, so I am gonna apologize now. Um, let's see here, oh my, ah! We lost the light. <laughs> we lost the light, I unplugged my plug here. Hang on a second, technical challenges. There we go, there we go. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Oh, somebody sent me stars. Thank you all so much. I appreciate that. Okay, one light is going to go off for just a second. Let's see which one. Oh, that one. I'm going to plug it in. I've got to... Oh, this is turning into a hot mess real quick, y'all. Gracie, I need backup. Gracie. <laughs> okay. Let's see if she comes to the rescue. Gracie! I need your help for a second, please. She's like, what? <laughs> I had a light that fell over. I need you to pick that up for me, please. All right, let's give this a quick blow dryer. You do not want to apply intense heat to this because sometimes, depending on what dye you use, it can make it bubble, okay? So let's just focus on the front right now. Woo! I'm blowing out some of that inside so I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna hold this away from me a little bit that way it's, it's maybe not quite so loud for you all. Look at the color. Oh my goodness. It's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be pretty. Hey Miss Terry thank you for sprinkling. Ooh, I'm blowing this out y'all. Probably should have done this step outside. We're just gonna get some of this Mod Podge dry real quick and then we'll move on. I won't keep you too long on this step. Thank you, Miss Sherry, for sprinkling. Thank you, Cheryl. I think it is gonna turn out really cute. It is a little bit brighter on screen than it is in real life, but do you see the shimmer, like the, the gloss that's, <clears throat> that's showing up now? And I think it really just deepens the shade of this color so look at all of the gorgeous shading and imperfections well really they're not imperfections they're perfect imperfections how about that <laughs> um just beautiful coloration on here and that dried pretty quick actually it's still just oops, still just a little bit tacky but not bad I'm loving it. I'm loving it so far. Look at the shine. And that really did deepen the color a little bit more. 
I'm loving this. Okay, so now let's dress it up. Let's make it a little more primitive. So I have some pip berries. You all know what pip berries are, right? Do you like the gloss, Rachel? Good. Uh, hello, Miss Lori, how are you? Okay, so I have, let me show you what, what things I have in mind to use to dress this little, this little Jackie up. I think it could be a girl. It could be Jack, too. Anything you want it to be, right? We're going to use some pip berries, I think. I don't know. We may or may not. Okay, I'll, I have some darker colored ones, and I think I'm going to pull maybe just two of these little stems off. These came from Amazon. You can sometimes find them at Joann's, Hobby Lobby, different things like that. Um, these are just a staple when it comes to primitive style decorating. Uh, thank you, Victoria. Glad you love it. I think it's turning out so cute. What a difference it is when you first started. Yes. Can you believe it? Like a before and after. Like we started with something that, um, I wish I would have brought the other one in here, that was a little bit, uh, little bit darker than this. It was more like this tone. But yes, now, look at that. Isn't that amazing? But let me show you the difference in the finish as well. This is the one that I showed you how to dye. Um, we used the dye and it's drying still. But now look at this. Well, we've added the, the shine. This just takes it up like 10 notches. This makes it look like a true, like finished product that you could sell. You could sell these at craft shows, y'all. You could sell these anywhere. Etsy, I mean, the sky's the limit, honestly. Um, I will tell you, let me just tell you one of my little mistakes that I've just noticed that when I was blow drying this, when some of this little inside dust blew out, it stuck to my Mod Podge that's on here. So learn from my mistake on that. Blow dry this out before you apply your Mod Podge. Okay. So blow dry all of the dust out, then apply your Mod Podge and then blow dry it. Okay. Learn from my mistake on that one. It's not too bad, but I just definitely want to make sure that you but you know that mistake that I made. If you want to do this on your own, we're going to take some of this raffia and we are going to take, you can get raffia at any craft supply store. We are going to take some of these little rusty barn stars. I grabbed these on Amazon because if you see this behind me, rusty barn stars, we added some little stars. You may not be able to see it on our little Jacqueline in there. Um, we added some little rusty barn stars, and they are also another staple when it comes to primitive decorating. Thank you, Miss Melanie. Thank you so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this thin little um, hemp string, and I have scissors around here somewhere, but right now the kitchen knife works in handy. <laughs> I'm going to tie some of these little barn stars on here, on this string. Um... And I cannot see my clock right now. Can somebody give me a time update, if you would so kindly? Hey, Miss Cindy, how are you, sweet lady? Hey, Carol. Um, the gourds, they're off. I just found them on Marketplace. Yep, I found, I grabbed four gourds for 10 bucks. <laughs> that was a pretty good deal. So I hope you're enjoying your beach vacation, Miss Carol. Been seeing all of your pictures and it looks beautiful. Okay, so I tied one little rusty barn star on that end. I'm gonna tie another little rusty barn star on this end. This little string is wanting to fray on the ends and so it's making it hard for me to get through the, where are my scissors? I'm gonna have to, oh, right there beside me, I'll tell you what. Okay, if it'd been a snake, it would've bit my leg off, right? Y'all ever hear that saying? because snakes can totally bite your legs off. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Terry, 350T. All right, I got eight minutes, we got this. We got it. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take my raffia, and what I'm gonna do is make a little, I don't think I'm gonna make a bow necessarily. Ah, uh, that might be a little much. Simplicity, simplicity. So repeat that to yourself. When you're doing primitive decor, simplicity is the key here. Now where'd my little string of stars go? Okay, I'm just gonna put this in the middle here. I may have to adjust those little stars in a little bit, but we'll, for now I wanna get them on, just so you kinda get the gist of this. Put this on, okay actually. I might have could have used a little bit more raffia. 
Now we're learning from my mistakes. You can make it any way you want to, right? <laughs> you want more raffia? Add more raffia. You don't want raffia? Don't add raffia. You could go with like uh, something like um, make it a little more shabby chic and use some lace or some um, sorry silk um, fabric, ribbon. Um, goodness. Homespun would look super cute and primitive. All right, let's get that out of the way. Um, I totally forgot to add my little pit berries here. Let's see here. I'm look. Oh, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. I'm gonna just tie these on here for right now. It's a little temporary fix, so that you all get the way this looks here. And then we're gonna add a cute little tag because little brown paper tags are so cute when it comes to primitive decor. And then we might turn this little raffia into our boat. We'll see. All right, I get these little craft tags from Dollar Store, Dollar General. I'm gonna trim it down a little bit because they are a little bit bigger than what I typically like. Um, just trim it down. I'm just eyeballing it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be perfect at all. I just know I wanted a little bit smaller. And of course, it's a little wonky, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to take it. I'm going to wad it up. You all saw this last week, right? This little trick. I love it. Just wad it up. Wrinkle it up real good, okay? Wad it up like you're just fixing to throw it in the trash. Uh, rats. You know what I don't have is my antiquing glaze. I usually like to dab a little sponge in my antiquing glaze and then just brush over this. And what it does is it highlights. Oh, we can do it. I've got a little bit of the stain left. Hey, we're making it work. <laughs> I'm going over, just rubbing it, and it's picking up the wrinkles. I'm going around the edges. And it's going to make this little tag look like a, like a piece of leather or something just old and tattered, which is what we're going for with primitive decorating okay now after this I'll probably will go back and um, add a little bit more but there you go so we went from like something that looks like this type of a brown tag to something that looks like this right okay so now I'm just gonna take my sharpie I'm just gonna write happy fall on here which side do I want this on mm, I think I want it like that okay um, this is not perfect. Just a free, quick hand job. Type hap or write happy fall on there. And I'm going to string this through. I'm going to have to grab another piece of um, raffia, though. Tie this on here. And then, of course, on the inside, you can add a strand of twinkle lights. You can add a little battery-operated tea light, little flicker light. Definitely something battery-operated or, you know, like a, an electric string of Christmas lights. You could do that. I definitely don't want to go with a real candle here. That would be not a good tip, okay? Not a good tip to go with real candle, obviously. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to foo-foo that up at the top. But, whoop, 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 let's go this way. There we go. I think I need to trim up my Rafi just a tiny bit. It's a little crazy. Looks like she's got bad hair day going on here. <laughs> I do like to have long strands that kind of look unplanned, but that was a little much. Okay, let's see what we got here. Whoop. Yes, isn't that cute? Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my raffi and I'm going to kind of scrunch it a little bit because it's a little straight in places. I'm going to kind of wrinkle it up. I want to make it look old. I want to make it look old. Thank you, Miss Terry and Vicki. How are you? Uh, now you need to know how to grow these. Yes, they do take a long time to dry. Really, I... I would love to grow them, but I just don't have the space to dry them. Um, and they can be really moldy and mildewy when in the drying process. So you have to kind of have like a, an outdoor shed or something like that with a lot of space that has good air ventilation. Um, but 
but yes you can definitely grow these and um, have for some really cute little things to use but you can you can buy them you know really pretty inexpensively as well like i said on marketplace is a great place to look but there we go i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little string of um twinkle lights in mine um this little string of twinkle lights is probably way too big for this project though um Ideally, probably what would be better is like a little battery operated or like a little plug in, you know, like the little lights that you um, put in like little Christmas village houses. Those would be adorable. That would work perfect if you, um, you know, were to cut out a little hole in the backside and stick that in. That would be that would be ideal. OK, so I'm just going to take this out and just stick it in just so we kind of see it glow. Right. Um, let's see if I can do this real quick. Um, before we get off here, all right, let's plug this in. Now, I like to use things that are um, obviously electric because I don't like having to change out batteries. <laughs> so, um, what I would do if I were using a strand of twinkle lights, I would just drill a small hole in the back and then string these through. But for right now, we're going to cheat for a minute. <laughs> and we're going to stick this in right there. I'm not going to let you all see the white cord, but ooh, hopefully you can see a little bit of the glow. But isn't that so cute? And oh, this way, this way. And at night, oh my goodness, it's so cute. And you can get these programmable remote control light strings. Remote control. Yeah, it comes on with a bunch of buttons. You don't have to worry about changing the batteries. But isn't this cute? Hope you loved it. Now, next week, I'm not sure what day I'm going to be on, but we are going to make some primitive style sunflowers. Sunflower ornies. If you're ready for that, shoot me some hearts. Let me know in the comments if you're watching replay. I will let you go.